Good evening, Peter. Good evening, Ron. And what an evening it is. Video number 1001. Uh, what a milestone. It just, it impresses me no end, Ron. Congratulations. What a warrior you are. <laughs> well, thank you. I did see that comment. I can't remember. I checked my emails when I came to the computer this morning, which was actually over a little over a half an hour ago, about 45 minutes maybe. And uh, I saw that you had made that comment and other people have made comments of congratulations and hang in there and keep going and all sorts of things. Very, very nice. Well, you know, I think it means a lot to a lot of people and uh, I just have to cast my mind back to uh, when I saw your first video, which was uh, something about the OPPT. And I just heard about them. I'd spent, um, you know, two years pretty much sitting in the park, uh, trying to figure out who I was and, uh, meditating and observing and contemplating and doing all these things. And, uh, and then I heard about the OPPT and I downloaded one of the radio shows and, uh, uh put it on CD. And it was a, a really lousy, horrible weather day. So I stayed in my car one day and thought, oh, I'll just put this CD on. And, uh, it was one of the collective imagination radio shows with, um, with Heather, uh, in full swing, uh, speaking about the certificate of uh, satisfaction, uh, that was just lodged in the UCC system. And, uh, and that really coincided that, that very day w was something where a, a great big energetic shift happened inside myself, you know, and, uh, and so I went on YouTube and I started looking for OPPT, and there wasn't very much there at all. There was one clip about one of the filings, I think, by Caleb, and uh, and there was your video. So um, I thought, oh, who's this guy? And um, and I really liked what I saw, and uh, I started following you, and um, and it was very much at a, at a, at a juncture in time where um, I found uh, enough of myself to, to want to voice it, to want to share it. And so I started doing my videos on YouTube. And then I think you and I connected on uh, Facebook. And you made a comment on one of my videos. And, and I made a video uh, commenting on your comment. And uh, <laughs> here we are. You know, here we are. And uh, it's just amazing how many connections of your friends, my friends... Um, interactions with Aristo and, um, you know, it's just amazing, uh, what sort of a, a web we have woven, you know. Um, it's absolutely, um, when you think about all these people that are connecting with you, uh, you know, through your videos, through Facebook, um, what an amazing web and, and how these ideas that are coming through us are resounding everywhere now. And uh, we're getting somewhere with it. I really feel like we are, you know. It's really fantastic. You know, I I think when the world understands the repercussions of the OPPT filings that happened, of course, last year and even into the early part of this year, uh, they're going to stand amazed uh, at how Heather managed to accomplish I, I don't even think that she realized how much she was accomplishing when she did this. Uh, may, maybe she did. I, I don't know. But, I mean, I resonated immediately when I heard it. Yeah, I, I've read all of the criticisms and all of the commentaries people have had. Uh, but something about it resonated with me in a deep part of myself from the very get-go. And I knew it wasn't about six billion dollars, or what is it, five, five billion and five billion, that's what it, that, you know, six, six million is another, is another whole thing, that's the Swiss Indo people that, that use that number, but in any case, I knew it had to do with value. I knew, I knew it was something more than just a monetary number, although that's how the world thinks. But anyway, when I connected with you, and of course I connected with Ariso a long time before that, yeah, uh, but so many people have actually begun doing videos as a result of of me just sitting before the camera and talking from my heart and allowing it to all hang out on my good days, my bad days, and all the days in between. 
Well, that's the thing. That's the thing that you really, really taught me. Uh, I, I saw that day in, day out. You let it all hang out, and you don't hold back, and you tell it just like you're feeling it. And and that's just so important that we don't impede our feelings, we don't impede our thoughts, we don't struggle, wrestle, fight with them. I mean, for me, that um, that OPPT moment, that certificate of satisfaction or certificate of completion, I can't remember, I think it's certificate of satisfaction, which is basically source saying, well, I'm satisfied that the experiment of duality is, is over and that uh, that we can now play with the polar opposites from a viewpoint of unity. <laughs> And um, and that coincided with, for me hearing that on that radio show coincided with my own inner resonance, which with what was happening exactly at that moment within myself, exactly the moment I heard it was exactly the moment where I became satisfied that uh, freedom is, you know, and and people will say, well, we have to become free or. You know, I, I must uh, fight the powers that were to uh, get them to give me my freedom. Um, you know, I was free yesterday. You know, and none of these things are um, none of these things are satisfying for me because freedom, like the vibration of your spirit, that's constantly pulsing into you through you. Um, freedom is that. You know, freedom is not something that can be granted or given or taken away. Freedom is what you realize within yourself. And of course, you're not free from this. I mean, it's good. We have to be become free from the control matrix that, uh, that has enslaved us. But your essential freedom is not freedom from this or freedom from that. Your freedom is that point where you realize that you are freedom. Not I am free. When I say I am free, I'm already going to memory. I'm already going to something that was. But when I say I am freedom, because it, you know you just can't get an ing in that word, free ing. Oh, I am freedom. You know, the moment you say I am freedom, the moment that you understand, more importantly, I am freedom, is the moment that you are free because you are starting to break away from that uh, control matrix. You've seen it for what it is. You're not fighting it anymore, and you're starting to break away. And I mean, that's a partial thing too for me because I it's still, in a lot of other ways, I was still fighting the old. But I find myself uh, less and less inclined to be fighting the old at the moment. I feel myself very much inclined to start uh, building the new and put all my energies into that. And um, so many people that I'm working with uh, on the internet at the moment trying to figure out what uh, self-governance might look like, what natural and uh, common law might look like. Um, so many people that I've been working with have been going through the same thing. Um, you know, there's been this point where everybody's really working together and it's all happening. It's all in the moment happening. And it's fantastic and it moves along organically and then somebody throws a spanner in the works and uh, emotionally or, or mentally and, and the ego, the woundedness, I prefer to call it, comes out. And uh, all of a sudden everybody's fighting amongst each other and uh, uh, maybe not as violent, uh, but still fighting in some way, shape or form. Still the, the old... Um, means of competition and who's the boss and all that sort of stuff comes out. And, um, you know, I got with one of the groups I was working with, uh, it, it actually reached a really big peak and um, I decided to just step back and, and just hang on a minute, what am I fighting? You know, why am I fighting here? I'm designing something new. Um, I'm trying to birth this thought form into... Uh, a, a, some form of a reality, a document reality at least. And uh, I just decided to stop fighting. And um, it was really funny how I hadn't really noticed while I was so engulfed in everything I was doing that the tension at home had started to rise and rise and rise between between my family members at home as well. And that there was a lot of fighting going on there too. And I'd kind of neglected it because I had my head inside a, a bit of a project that I was working on. And uh, and lo and behold, when I decided within that group of people not to fight and just focus on the positive and put my energy, well, positive, focus on the, the, the progress and put my energy in the progress, all of a sudden the whole tension broke. And in my home too, 
at the same time, the whole tension levels have changed. The people are all of a sudden getting along, and and it's getting beyond that woundedness. And uh, and that's what we need, you know. The the one of the main uh, controlling uh, one of the main weapons of the controlling system of the matrix is pain and hurt. You know, we've all been so hurt by living in this matrix, and if we can heal the pain within ourselves, um, that is really the first step that is required to start realizing that you are freedom. Yeah, I think that, uh, again, I'll, I'll keep coming back to this over and over. It, it's inside of us, but so many people only focus there. And as long as I can feel comfortable, often through denial, then everything is okay. But it is inside and outside, and they are not two different things. They are actually the same thing. And that's that's been one of my lessons that, Spirit keeps saying to me, it's not just what you feel inside. It is what's going on around you because everything reflects everything else. And, Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a challenge because the old paradigm thinking is still very much a part of our thinking. Even when we try not to admit that or own it, it is. It, and it keeps coming back and it, and it wants us to look at all of these levels like peeling an onion and seeing how deep this goes so that we can, the healing takes place at a very deep level, going down into our subconscious and, and, and up into our astral planes or whatever you want to call them. I mean, we are immense beings and just getting a grip on that and understanding that we're not just little insignificant people, but we're really great. We're all of us great beings that we absolutely have to ourselves. We all are a great being, and uh, and possibly, well, <laughs> for me, surely one great being, um, and it's and it truly is like that, you know. The possibilities of um, the possibilities of the the inversion of the iceberg, where um, where this this huge subconscious that we have, which is a million times more capable than our conscious mind. Um, for, for those two to start to merge and for those capabilities, all the capabilities of the changes happen when the subconscious mind becomes more accessible to the conscious mind, when they merge more and more and more. And of course, to do that, you need to li look deep in that darkness where all that programming sits because that's where all the gremlins live too. That's what but, Carl um, Young said. Yeah. One, one of the examples that, that uh, occurs to me regularly, not that often, but quite regularly, um, when I can really just uh, step back from my own problems and my own life and, and get into the inging, is, is the merger of all my senses into one. And um, I remember driving home from the park one day, and uh, I was on a you know, fairly big road, it was an 80 kilometer an hour uh, speed limit, uh, you know, 50 odd miles an hour. And, um, and I remember driving and just the sight, the sound, the smell, nothing was separate anymore. It was just one sense. And I remember driving at this speed and driving past a butterfly, and I could see, smell, taste, feel it. I saw every marking on that butterfly. I heard the butterfly, okay? I'm in a speeding car. I heard the butterfly. I saw every marking, and I could feel from a distance the coarseness of its wings. Now, you may say that a butterfly's wings are pretty smooth, but from a microscopic point of view, they're actually quite coarse, like a, like a lizard crawling up a smooth wall, you know, the, to, to the lizard, the wall isn't smooth. And at the same time, I was not taking my eyes off the road. My, my senses were 100% capable of, of my full driver capabilities and reactions. I saw every leaf that was blowing over in detail with every little vein on every leaf. I, I saw every marking on every tree like a so magnificent once you really start looking at the drawings and nature the the art of it is it's incredible you know god's just the greatest artist and architect and to see all of that at once and to be able to you know while you're driving 80 k's an hour and you, you're past this butterfly in a flash but to see it completely to hear it to sense it to smell it to feel it all in one like sense time stood still it sounds like in a well sense. 
Yeah, yeah, it is kind of like that. But um, you're just processing data at such a high speed. You know, and, and these are, these are previews for me. You know, these are, these are promises of things to come. But as you heal yourself, as you're cleaning out all the gremlins in your subconscious, um, those capabilities start to increase and increase all the time. And, uh, I'm very excited about, uh, watching Aristo stuff at the moment too with you because, um, because he, he, he can, he can put it so scientific. You know, you do this, then you do that. And for me, it's all organic and it's all a mess, you know, because I get to that point and then something else happens and, and it all drops away for a bit and, you know, and then I pick that bit up and I, I'm seeing myself all these different stages that Aristo is talking about while he's talking about them orderly in sequence. So um, I, I'm a bit of a mess where that's concerned, but, you know, I go my way and that's that's what I do. I've tried doing systems in sequence and it's it's never worked for me, so... I suppose I'm just the chaotic type. Um, so that's one of the things. It's just, but it's brilliant to get that description with that pinpoint precision of, of description that Aristo delivers. And, uh, I just want to congratulate him on that. And, uh, I, I think that's a really good thing for, uh, for so many viewers to be taking in on this, in this particular time where, where we're all undergoing these changes because we all will as humanity. We are collectively going to undergo these changes. Our DNA is changing. Our brain capabilities are changing. And we are going to heal the gremlins in the subconscious. And we only need very little programming in the subconscious because we do need programming. I don't want to relearn driving my car every time I get in the car. That's programmed. Or maths, you know, 2 plus 2 equals 4. I don't have to think about it because it's programmed. So conditioning is a good thing, but it's it's been abused and uh, we've been controlled by it. So once we get rid of this conditioning, what opens up to us is just an amazing, an amazing new view of the world as and and outside and inside being mirrors, an amazing new view of ourselves. And uh, that's the process we're all in. That's the process we're all working towards. And uh, 1,000 videos, Mr. Ron Van Dyke, has gone a long way for a lot of people, I promise you, that you will never, ever know the full extent of of um, the help, solace, friendship, and, and teaching that you've given to people through all these videos. And I can attest to that. I'm one of them. You know, I I have the sense that the humanity is on the verge of its greatest aha moment ever. And, yep. and when, when we finally get it, it's just going to blow all of the illusory matrix stuff apart. And I don't know if that's going to happen this year. I'd like to see it happen this year. But I do feel it's more imminent than it's ever been. And it's, it's of a of a scope that we've not yet experienced, and and I still think there's going to be a process in it. It's not going to happen for everybody all at once. Although I don't know, you know. Oh, how do we know? How do we know? You just get to get through the next bend in the river, like I always say, and we'll we'll take it from there. But something is going to shift in the heart mainly first, because. If you're going to go through this big an awakening, then you have to you have to be able to do it on a bed of bliss, you know. And that's what the opening of the heart does. It always gives you a background buzz of bliss, and you can be angry on top of that. You can be disappointed. You can even be depressed on top of that. But because you've got that baseline of bliss, it it makes you not afraid to go through what you need to go through. And Indeed, before we get there, humanity uh, and ourselves have to have to go through uh, a few painful moments. You know, awakening can be painful. I, I remember great pain um, as, as the veil falls away and uh, you realize that something outside of yourself and something inside of yourself that you've lived for so long has been an illusion and a lie. And um, that's that's painful, but uh, it's the shift is happening in the heart. That's That's the main place it has to happen. And then the interaction with the brain and and the sub the the inversion of the uh, the subconscious conscious uh, iceberg um, yes that can all take place then and then all of those interactions with the others <laughs> and yeah. it's all part of it it's all part of it you know I, I, right now I mean I have uh, uh, family issues that are coming up that are demanding a lot of my time and uh, and. I feel sometimes like 
various people are pulling on me, some pulling this way, others pulling this way. But it's all about opening me up. It's all about getting me to see from a different perspective and, and to be uh, to be easy on myself is probably the hardest lesson I have to learn. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, it's, it's the same for all of us. Um, and I think, you know, when you do have a shift too, the circumstances don't immediately become sort of all, all moonlight and roses because when you have a shift inside, all the circumstances outside will want to come and try that out, test, test you on it. And then, then when you apply it outside, if you achieve some, some more uh, deeper sense of inner harmony, um, your family members will uh, go nuts on you, basically, because you have to make that real in your environment then, as well as just within yourself. And so you will be tested. So um, we can expect a little bit of upheaval as well. We have to be uh, open-eyed and uh, uh, expect a little bit of trouble as well. But I think that little bit of trouble is going to fade very, very quickly. Um, you know, I see hundredth monkeys everywhere now. They're not just in the trees. There's, there's one in my cupboard right over there. <laughs> oh yeah, I we I think we've actually long ago surpassed the hundredth monkey thing. I think we began to do that a co at least a couple of years ago now. Um, two to two to three years ago, we began to to cross that uh, bridge of of reaching critical mass, and and I don't really think there's any turning back. Uh, no, the, the matrix is still responding and it's still testing us out and is still trying to re-engage us in that battling, that ego fighting and all that sort of thing. And uh, you can see that reflected now in the, in the situation with, uh, you know, the, the Syria false flag and uh, Obama posturizing. But uh, how lonely does he look at the moment, you know, because he's going, oh, I'm going to go strike on Syria, whether I have to do it by myself, whether I have a mandate from mandate from the UN or whether I have a mandate from Congress, it does, oh, I'll just go and strike by myself. And then next thing you know, going, well, I am going to ask Congress, you know, and the military are kind of going already, well, we don't really want to do that. It's a hornet's nest. Now, what do you want to send me into? So he's looking really lonely, you know, this this sort of wanting to fight and posture. He's, he's isolating himself. And, uh, and you know, the guys that want to fight are getting more and more lonely all the time because the, the people that don't want to fight anymore and that want to build the new and put their energy into just that are uh, getting the upper hand. And, uh, well, yep, I think they ought to let McCain and Kerry go fight. You know, let them be the ones that go and, and fight. Don't give them any weapons or anything. Just let them go have their have their war. They're the ones that are trying to push Obama and say, you've got to attack. You can't listen to Congress. Even if Congress votes it down, you've got to do it anyway. <laughs> and there's other, well, hawks. Yeah. there's other hawks like that, too. But it, it's, it's, it's such a charade, as I see it. Yeah, those, those hawks are really sparrows, you know, wear, wearing hawk suits, you know. Uh, if you don't help them, they won't fly at all, I'll tell you. They'll just go down like a ton of bricks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Peter, you know, I, I have another meeting that I, that I want to get to online uh, in just a few minutes. So I hope you don't mind that we make this a little bit shorter, actually, than 30 minutes today. Um, no, that's fine. I'm actually quite bushed <laughs> physically. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, uh, I, I didn't get to bed till after midnight last night. I went to support uh, some of my friends that were uh, playing at one of the hottest music spots in the county, and uh, they don't get enough. Not very many bands get an opportunity to play there, and I had promised them that I would go. So I got got home a little bit late, uh, but it was it was a good e it was a good evening. And uh, in any case, uh, I, I so appreciate having these conversations. Thank you for what you said about Aristo. I truly wish that more people would avail themselves of his wisdom because he has a lot to offer. Uh, they will. Yeah. They will. Yeah, actually, we, we put this stuff on YouTube and people keep coming in and keep coming back. It'll build as you go along. And uh, certainly advise everybody uh, to, to push those videos on Facebook, etc. as well. Yeah, I'm surprised at how many people are commenting on videos that I did two plus years ago. Uh, yep. They're making fresh comments on it, and sometimes two or three people are commenting on the same video because one person watches it and shares it, and then they get a dialogue going over there, so they don't die. <laughs> yeah, they don't die. That's exactly right. I still keep getting lots of comments on my older videos too, so it's brilliant. 
But anyway, okay. Ron, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, everybody, for listening and watching. And uh, here's Namaste 1001 to you, Ron. <laughs> Namaste, Peter. Bye-bye for now. Thanks. Bye.